Quantum numbers come from what is called Schrodinger's equation. And previously we've seen from de Broglie's equation that electrons act as waves and actually have a defined wavelength. Prior to this, physicists have studied waves in other systems quite a bit and they understand the mathematics behind waves. And what Schrodinger did was take some of the mathematics that physicists have used to describe waves and then apply them to the wave-like properties of uh, electrons. Schrodinger's equation is actually quite complex. Some textbooks might cover it in uh, more detail than I'm doing here. Uh, in reality, in general chemistry, we, we don't need to particularly truly understand Schrodinger's equation. What we need to do is understand uh, what actually has come from it. So in this sense, really all we need to know is that Schrodinger's equation um, applies wave uh, equations to electrons. And from this application, mathematical equation, equations called wave functions have come from that. Wave functions are going to be called orbitals, so we're going to make a transition meaning between a mathematical state and more into a descriptive state uh, later on in this chapter. And the idea is from Schrodinger's equation is that uh, electrons can only occupy very specific spaces around a particular atom. And these wave functions describe that, they're called orbitals, and really what we need to understand is that electrons surrounding an atom are contained in these orbitals. So electrons are really contained in these defined probability of spaces of where the electron is going to lie at. And it's important to understand that we're going to have these spaces and they're going to have shapes. Really what they represent is a probability distribution of where the electrons likely to found. So we're going to get spaces where the probability of the electron to be inside of this space is very high and outside of it is very low. But we will never really truly know exactly where the electron is, is at. So Schrodinger's equation has put forth wave functions. Wave functions are uh, a description of probability of where electrons lie at around an atom and they use or, or they actually produce the, the predicted shape of where these electrons lie at. And this is going to allow us to move forward and uh, understand bonding around a particular atom. So these quantum numbers are used to describe the electrons around an atom. And the way I like to put it is that a quantum number is like a zip code for an electron. So for every electron inside of an atom, there are four unique quantum numbers. And in the beginning, all we're going to do is describe what quantum numbers are and some of the rules that quantum numbers follow. And then subsequently, we are going to apply quantum numbers to our understanding of the periodic table and to our understanding of bonding. The quantum numbers themselves actually give us a description of the orbital. So what type of orbital do we have? What's its shape? and it gives us information about uh, the electrons that are contained inside of those orbitals. So it's, a, it's going to be able to describe the types of orbitals and types of electrons that are around a particular atom. And for, for right now, what you need to understand is that for every electron in, inside of a particular atom, there are going to be four unique quantum numbers that are going to describe it, describe it and give us information about that electron. So the first one is called the principal quantum number, and this number can be any positive non-zero integral value. And we have seen this before when we were talking about the Bohr atom, about the in value, the quantized uh, sta uh, stationary states that we have for electrons uh, around a particular atom, and so this in value means uh, pretty much the same thing. And we understand is that as the in value increases, the energy of the orbital decreases, that's important. And this is because the orbital is actually getting further away from the nucleus. So as the electron gets further away from the nucleus, uh, the positive and negative charge, the positive charge from the nucleus and the negative charge from the electron, that interaction decreases. So as our n value increases, our, our electron gets further away from the nucleus, and then the energy of that interaction actually decreases. The next quant um, quantum number is called the orbital angular momentum, and this gets the letter L as a description of it. And this actually tells us what type of orbital 
that we're playing around with. So there are different types of spaces where electrons can live in, and what we're going to find out is these different spaces provide different um, chemistry that is going to come into play when we start applying these ideas towards bonding. With quantum numbers, there are rules, and we'll see kind of what all this means in a little bit. Um, for a given situation, the possible L values are, uh, for, a, for an electron are actually determined by the N value that is given. So the rule is, it says that L can be zero or any positive integer, but not, can, cannot be larger than N minus one. So the N value that's given for an electron determines the possible L values that uh, an electron can have. So here what you do is you start off at zero and start adding one. So you go zero, one, two, three, four, until you get to N minus one. And when you get to N minus one, that is the lar largest possible um, L value that you can have for an electron in a particular situation. So just remember that N determines the possible L value. So what do these L values really mean? So we're gonna get into that here in a second, we're gonna come back through and we're gonna talk about these things in a little bit better description. But for right now, what we're talking about is the rules that quantum numbers need to follow. So M sub L is called the magnetic quantum number. And once again, to hear the possible values we have for M sub L are determined by the L value. So the rule, uh, they write it out like this. This isn't uh, probably the, the best way of understanding it. It's a little tricky and we'll look at it uh, more closely in one of the subsequent videos. But what's important to understand is that the possible M sub L values for uh, an electron are determined by the L value for that electron. And what you do is you start at minus L and add one, then add two, and you eventually go through zero you keep adding a number until you get to positive L, and then those are your possible N sub L values. So there, we're gonna take a couple of different ways of looking at this, um, but what you need to really understand is that the possible M sub L values are determined by the L value of the electron. The last quantum number, or the fourth one, is called M sub S, and it just refers to what is called electron spin. And it, it's just a directional idea. Um, we call it spin just, um, just to help us understand. And really, uh, electrons can either be spin up or spin down. So typically we say if, if it's spin up, it's plus one half, and it's, if it's spin down, it's minus one half. Um, and so M sub S really only has two possible values. So we're gonna find out there's more rules to this, but in reality for quantum numbers, M sub S only has two possible values, plus one half or minus one half. And it just returns, to, it refers to a property that electrons have called spin. And later on, we're gonna find out there's more rules to this and, there's, and, and spin is actually kind of important. It, 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 uh, produces certain properties inside side of elements. But for right now, all you need to know is that M uh, sub S only has two possible values, plus one half or minus one half. Now what we're gonna do is go back through and look at each one of these quantum numbers in a little bit more detail, and then start uh, combining them together to get an overall understanding.